Hey, how we doing guys? This is Jovan, again with another, uh, you can call it a Tezos update or uh, uh, informative session. And what we're going to be doing today is talking about bacon. So okay, so in Tezos, um, the creation of blocks and um, the rewards for creating those blocks are done in, um, are done in like Bitcoin and things like that. And a concept called proof of work. In Tezos, it's known as proof of stake. And although there are quite a few different blockchains out there that have proof of stake concepts and things like that. Tezos has its own way of implementing um, this particular algorithm. And so I'm going to upload a document here or a link to, I'm going to upload a few different links and a few different documents so you guys can follow along in detail and, and you can um, really get deep down and dirty into the technical side of this type of stuff um, as it pertains to Tezos in particular. Okay, so let's get going. The, the proof of stake algorithm, the concept in, in, in general in Tezos has a few different moving parts, way too many to cover in one video. And so uh, because of that, we're just going to focus on delegation today. And delegation um, contains both what we call baking and endorsing, all right, and Tezos, okay? So Tezos.alpha uses a delegated proof of stake model. DPoS right has come to has has come to design a specific type of algorithm used for instance in bit shares this is not the model however used in tezos.alpha although there is a concept of delegation as in bit shares okay delegates all right delegates in tezos.alpha control the tokens right so in tezos.alpha tokens are controlled through a private key called the manager key Tezos.alpha accounts let the manager, right, specify a public delegate key, all right? So you have a private key called the manager key, okay? And then you have your public delegate key where you can either set the delegate key as the baker or the endorser for the private key or the manager account, or you can choose a third party service. So let's go through this, let's go through this, this uh, paragraph again. Okay. All right, so delegates and delegation. There's pretty much two ways that an individual token holder can delegate and are, are, are stake within a, in Tezos, okay? You can either set yourself as a delegate or choose a third party service, okay? So in Tezos.alpha, tokens are controlled through a private key called the manager key. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna call it my account B2, all right? Say that I'm I'm a person who wants to bake on my own, okay? All right. So for the purpose of this video, in Tezos.alpha, tokens are controlled through a private key called the manager key. My account to be. All right. I'm a baker. I'm gonna be baking. So I'm gonna set up my own delegation, okay? Tezos.alpha accounts let the manager specify a public delegate key. Okay? This is the identity key. All right. We're gonna call that B2. All right. This key may be controlled by the manager themselves, like me, of my account 2B, or by another party, i.e. tezigator.com, i.e. my crypto delegate. And rumor has it that Tezos community is developing or building a delegation service where the proceeds will go to community activities and things like that. But I will update you more on that when I get more information on that, okay? The responsibility of the delegate at this point, right, who is, who is me, because I'm going to set myself as a delegate. B2 is going to be the delegate for my account 2B all right, is to take part in the proof of stake consensus algorithm and in the governance of Tezos. Baking, right, or endorsing and voting, okay? The manager can generally change the delegate at any time, though the contract can be marked uh, to a specific and immutable de delegate, right? So, permanent. Though delegation can be changed dynamically, the change only becomes effective after a few cycles, okay? There are also default accounts in Tezos, which are just the hash of a public key. These accounts do not have an attached, excuse me. There are also, so there, there's default accounts in Tezos, which are just the hashes of, pu uh, of the public key. These accounts do not have an attached delegate key and do not participate in the proof of stake algorithm. That's very important to know, okay? Finally, delegate accounts used for, place, uh, for placing safety deposits are automatically de delegated to delegate itself, okay? So let me show you how I did this, okay? After downloading the blockchain, okay, and I'm going to upload a link where you can get this code at or you can get these uh, command props. 
What you're going to do in the command prompt line is you're going to you're going to first if you don't have a cryptographic identity yet. This is that public key that we're talking about. You need to generate one, right? And in Tezos, what you'll do is you'll say something like dot slash alphanet dot sh space client space generate or gen space keys. In quotations, you're going to say something like B2. So that's my public delegate key. I'm just going to call my public delegate key B2. All right? B2. So dot slash alphanet dot sh space client space gen space keys in quotations b2 all right then you have to generate a new free account so you're going to replace in the code line for the command prompt you're going to play replace my account with something that you can remember that can associate the, my account your manager account with the private keys with your delegation or your baker account right so for the purpose of this, remember we called my manager account my account to be, okay? Which is attached, okay, right. My account to be is my manager key. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say dot slash alphanet dot sh space client space originate space free space account in quotations my account to be for in quotations B2. So you're going to generate the keys for your for the public key first. And I named that B2. And it gave me my public keys. Okay? And then you're going to you're going to run this command here, dot slash alphanet dot sh space client space originate space free space account my account to B for B2 all in quotations, the, the, the names, okay? So you have a name of the account. The name of my account is my account 2B. The name of my identity or the public key is B2. So now I know that those two are associated, okay? I know that those two are associated. I know exactly when I, I know exactly that my account 2B is the manager has the, has the private keys and has the private keys for, for, for the account. And B2 is my delegate account, right? And so from my account to B, I'm going to fund my delegate account for the baking process because the public keys, the public delegate keys are the, are, are the keys that participate in the proof of stake algorithm, okay? The baking process and the voting process, okay? So now I know that I have my account to B, which is which has my uh, the private keys to my account and an associated public delegate account, right? Called B2. So once you've done that, you're going to I'm just going to go through the uh, the memory of my of the command command prompt. Okay, client generate. Okay, boom, boom, boom. We're on the right track. Looks like. Are we? we we'll go down a little bit more. Give me a second, guys. Um, get balance for B2. Transfer, get balance for B2. Get balance for my account, B2. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is exactly what I did. All right? I ran, and I would show you guys this, and I wish I had the setup so I can show you what I'm looking at here, but I don't, okay? And so, maybe Jonas or Mike can help me out uh, uh, doing that for you guys. So again, remember, dot slash alphanet dot sh client gen keys b2. That's the first thing I did, okay? And it generated some keys for me. It generated an identity that the network is going to recognize as a delegate, okay? And then I went in and I just... I hit or I, I put in the command uh, command prop dot dot slash alphanet dot sh client originate free account my account b2 so I just create so I'm creating my account b2 for b2 right and the reason why I call it my account b2 for b2 is that way I don't confuse myself between the different contracts I have so I know that my account b2 has the private keys for b2 all right 
That right there. So if I'm a baker, my account B2 is going to be doing my baking. That's where all of the, that's where my private keys are. So I'm going to fund my account B2. That's where on launch, on launch, that's where you're going to send your, your Tezzies to and, 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 um, in your terminal that they're going to go to that wallet address. Okay. That wallet address, my account B2 is going to receive, let's say 10,000 Tezzies. All right. Or let's say a hundred thousand Tezzies. Okay. From there, from there, that's where I'm going to fund my delegate, my delegate, my delegate account, which is B2. All right. And how you do that is after you've created, after you've created what, after you've gone through what I've just said, I went and checked my balance for B2 just to make sure that there was nothing there. Because when you create an account, it's going to give you a, on the alphanet, it's going to give you a hundred, a hundred thousand free tezzies. Okay. Right. So I want to see a hundred thousand free tezzies and my account to be, but I do not want to see any type of tezzies in, in my identity account, which I created first. Okay. And I know this can be confusing. All right. And I'm, I'm doing my best to get you guys ready for launch. Okay. So just bear with me. All right. And so I know that my account to be has a balance of a hundred thousand tezzies. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I want to bake, right? I want to bake and at this point, I have enough. I have enough. I have the threshold. I meet. I meet the requirement to bake on the network. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to there's there's a, a there's a line of code that you're going to put into the command prop. Okay. And this is all going to be in the in, in one of the links that I upload. Okay. And it is dot alphanet dot sh space client space set space delegate set keyword set delegate for my account B two. 2B2. Right. Now, let's let's hit enter. Operation success got the source managers or got the source manager keys. B2. Operation successfully injected in node. And it gives you an operation hash. Okay. So I know that I know now to a certain degree that that my that I'm that I'm beginning to bake, okay? Before I had to do that, though, I had to transfer, you know, I had to transfer some, some cash into that account, right? And so from my account to B, all you do is you go, same thing, you know, you're going to have this, it's going to be these uh, command prompts, okay? Dot alphanet dot sh client transfer 50,000 from my account B2 to B2. Bow. Hit enter. Boom. And it's going to send the 50,000 over, all right? It's going to tell you that, hey, okay... Uh, operation successfully injected into the node and then you can check your balances from here just to make sure and then you go and you uh, that's when you set sorry excuse me right so that's when I'm gonna go and say dot slash alphanet dot sh space client space set set delegate for my account B2 to B2, all right? And how you can check this to make sure that you've staked is I'm going to copy, right? I'm going to copy B2, the, 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 the address, the public, the, public, uh, the public key address for, for my account B2, which is, at this, which is TZ1, CC, whatever, okay? Lowercase TZ, okay? And so then... You'll see in that link that I give you that you'll be able to copy and paste all of this stuff here. I'm going to, so then I'm going to, it's going to be some code that looks like this. Dot slash alphanet dot sh space client space rpc space call slash block slash head slash proto slash helpers slash rights slash baking slash delegate. Right after that. I am going to, let me erase this, I am going to copy and paste my, my, my public key, my public key address for B2 right there. And what it tells me is, okay, okay, now after a few cycles, right, after a few cycles, I'm going to do this again, okay, and it's going to give me, uh, it's going to give me a set of blocks that are going to be coming up that I should be able to bake, okay, and that's how that works, guys. That's how that works. Now, 
this was this is not something that is necessarily easy to understand okay and i apologize if 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 i didn't do a good job at explaining this but i wanted to get a video out there as soon as possible because i think we're approaching launch kind of kind of fast okay and so at least get you guys to get an idea on 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 how on how this process works and so what i'm also going to do is i'm going to attach all the links that you need for for uh to be able to do the process that i just did okay like i said there's about four to five different parts that uh, go into the proof of stake algorithm in Tezos or the proof of stake concept in Tezos as a whole. And so covering all of that stuff in one video is virtually impossible. Okay. This is the way that we need to do things though. This is the way that blockchain technology is going to su succeed. And this is the way that cryptocurrency is going to maintain itself and be here for years and years to come. Okay. What Tezos is doing, what Tezos is doing is this dealing with the problems that you see in, in Bitcoin and Ethereum and in terms of block creation, all right, and the way the reward process goes and the type of resources that are being spent in order to create these these coins, right? And then secondly, it 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 uses the proof of stake algorithm to uh, implement a mechanism of governance so you don't have civil wars and civil factions or or groups. Uh, that are vying for power splitting the network in two like we see in other protocols and things like that And so this is what these are just some of the features that Tezos is bringing to um, to the to the table and why And why I was able to raise you know so much money during this ICO and it probably is at this point the most anticipated blockchain project at least launch in cryptocurrency history it, it most definitely is in my in my personal opinion and so next week I'll be back with a with another video on uh, you know, maybe, maybe explaining this stuff just a little bit more, but you know, we need to start talking about percentages and, uh, and rewards and block cycles and things like that. So right now though, I just wanted to get you guys some links and kind of explain to you how the, how the baking, uh, the baking, um, how the baking process works, because a lot of people want to know about that. You know, everybody wants to be able to mine, uh, mine on Ethereum and on on Bitcoin. And while it's it's not as it's not easier to bake in Tezos, right? You gotta you gotta have the Tezis to bake, right? But the process in which it and the process and the type of resources that go into it is uh, are much are much meager compared to what we're seeing with, you know, Bitcoin and, and, and Ethereum, where they have these whole freaking mining farms, right? It's costing some of these guys a million dollars in a day just to, just for electricity. You can bake with Tezos as long as you have enough Tezos to bake with a simple laptop. And so in terms of longevity and, um, and um, efficiency and just... And like, like I said, I think longevity is the right word in terms of uh, in terms of longevity and maintaining this this ledger, this public uh, this public ledger over a long period of time. Uh, in terms of block creation and, and, and currency creation and governance, I think Tezos has it going on. And so I highly encourage you guys to follow the links that I'm going to put a, a, a below. And thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye.